Nearly 15 million people have logged on and experienced the world of Warcraft. Quite commonly overlooked is the rich and illustrious lore and history behind Azeroth. Join us as we venture beyond the pixels, code, and players. Welcome to the story of Warcraft. This is But Wait, There's Lore. Hosted by Prime. I am a god! Sarah. It's cute you're still trying. Done. If I agreed with you, we would both be wrong. And how it's so. Don't you look so smug. This show may contain harsh language. Listener discretion is advised. Hey guys, and welcome to But Wait, There's Lore here on NordrisleRadio.com. My name is Necroxus, and for a little revenge from being kicked off the show a couple weeks ago, I have now commandeered the show and I am hosting. So be prepared to bow to well, your alliance overlords. That, that is only because the Dunder King saw fit to allow you to do this. Oh, oh okay. If, if I did That's not see true. fit to allow you to do this, you would be crushed under my boot. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good point. That was done, by the way, and he's here, as well as Howie. Um, they're both here, so how are you guys doing? I, I am fine. I'm doing okay. <laughs> that does not, you, do, you do not sound okay. <laughs> uh, for those of you who... your ass at smite! Oh! That's uh, oh, true. That was a thing. You know what? I'm going to be the better man, and, and I have to give you, I'm going to give you this match just because we have to focus on the show, Don, and some people like you don't care about the show. Feel you, free to leave all hateful gonna, comments. Feel give free to leave all time. hateful comments of Don and his hate for the show in the comments section below. Nothing new. This is already going so great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are uh, listening live, you can join us in the chat uh, in the IRC. Just go to nordrisleradio.com. Click on the chat uh, button at the top bar and put in your whatever pseudonym you like, and you can talk to us. Um, you'll be sent, we'll be taking questions later on. Um, that'll be sent to me, Necroxus, in the chat. Uh, if you are not listening live and you want to email your questions in, uh, you can do that at lore at omfg.fm. Um, we will answer those at some point. Or if uh, forum-based discussions are more your thing, because that's actually what I like, uh, you can go to knightsoflore.com and take part in some of the stuff going on there. I was actually just reading a thread about the new Vol'jin novel that's coming out in the beginning of July there. So if you're interested in that, go check that out. And finally, uh, for t-shirts and merchandise, you can go to uh, www.printonblack.co.uk. Scroll down on the main page to the Smoking Gamer somewhere on the left side. Click that and you will get all of the catalog for Smoking Gamer. How's that done for all the plugs? That, that is that is good for all the plugs you have passed the test. However, I need to I need to blow some minds. Uh, <laughs> this isn't even the live show. What? What? Um, I know, right? Crazy. Uh, there was a technical mishap, and for the second week in a row, that the IRC got an exclusive show, like first bit of the show. We started recording after the first break, so we just went Wait, recording from this. there. Uh, what? They didn't get your explanation. No, no, they didn't. So this is 100% YouTube exclusive content right here. <laughs> oh, it's 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 good. Um, we do what we can. What happened is I, me and Howie were playing Smite, and I did kick his ass that during the first five like a gentleman, so we could focus on the show. Like a sir. Like a mother father gentleman. No, what we what we our opening conversation piece was Necroxis was trying to blame all the problems of Azeroth on Thrall. No, and just the current ones. Yeah. Just the current ones. What is it? He was a lot more deceptive in his meaning. If we weren't <laughs> used to it by now, we might not have known where he was going with this. But we know him well enough now that it always whatever question he asks, it must have something to do with blaming Thrall. That, that is what got him fired in the first place. <laughs> I'm not letting it go. I refuse. Let's let it go, bro. Let's let it go. But anyway, uh, Necro very nobly tried to attempt to make this argument. However, me and Howitzer, who have had to put up with pride for far too long, uh, were not letting him get away with this. And we managed to 
very skillfully deflect all problems that have ever happened to the Draenei. It's all their fault. There was a very logical uh, argument for this, and Necro conceded the point. We refer to this throughout the episode, and also the Titans, and basically the premise of it, it was never the Horde's fault. Wait, can I just say, I did concede the point, but only because you guys refused to ever even give an inch. So I just gave up. That is how, well, we, here's what, that's how we do it in England. I mean, just to give them, like, the evidence of what happened. We went, you said, I believe your question specifically was, how do we, um, whose fault is it that all the things that are currently happening are happening? And how do we, like, what do we do? Like, where was the, where was the, started? How do we end it? So right. what you wanted to, what you wanted was to us to go to the point where Thrall appointed Garrosh. That's true. But no, that's what you wanted, and I conceded that was a mishap. However, I decided to go back very much further than that. Because, yeah. let's face it, Azeroth has had tons of problems. And in, like Dunn said, we discovered the root of it. It's the Draenei. Slash the Eridar. It's all their uh-huh. fault. Now, as to the reasons why... We have the fact that if they... We've started off with the reason that if the Draenei didn't land on Draenor, Kil'jaeden never would have wanted the orcs, never would have brainwashed them, and never would have had them invade Azeroth in the first place. So therefore, like, way... That was the the way, there wouldn't be a conflict. By the way, my counter to that was that the Burning Legion would eventually come to Azeroth anyway, but I also lost that argument. Which, yeah, which led to the expansion of the Eridar. Because you specifically said Warcraft 3 as a main issue because you definitely needed those orcs in Warcraft 3 to take them down. To have what happened happen and have us come out victorious. Yep. So I decided that we just, okay, well let's remove Archimon. Let's just take him out of the picture. And if the Eridar never existed as a race, Kil'jaeden and Archimon would never have existed. Thus, sure, Sargeras might have eventually come with a smaller forest, but nothing like Archimon. Archimon never would have destroyed Dalaran, therefore we would have had Dalaran and we wouldn't have needed the orcs in order to push these people back. But he still would have come to Azeroth. And I don't, I'm still, I refuse to give up this point even though I kind of just said I did. But, I don't know, I still think they would come to Azeroth. I mean, maybe they wouldn't destroy Dalaran, but uh, I think eventually it would go be, be in the warpath and get blown up by something. So the Alliance I mean, can't handle its problems? No, that's the whole point of Warcraft 3. The Alliance needed the, the orcs to, to help. Thrall and his orcs. I've never argued that point. So it's not Thrall's fault then? By the way, this is, this is a whole... For YouTube listeners and confused IRC, people who caught the show live and uh, watching it back on YouTube because I just can't get enough. Um, this is all new content. Apparently Necro has had some time to revise his opinions or has no, got, I think I has made got the, the same point one. back in him. He's got the fight just, back in him, that might be what it is. No, it's not. It's just I was trying to make it seem like I didn't go down without a fight. You Although fought. I ultimately did. You fought well, and you lost. I decided, like I all the enemies of the, the Horde. I turned the blame to the Titans and then followed up with the uh, humans as being as fault, at fault. Also Night Elves. I believe they were tired. The Night Elves. Oh, and for uh, people who are listening exclusively on YouTube, it's also the Dwarves' fault now we have established because yeah, the dwarves because are servants of the titans the stooges i believe was the exact phrase stooges right. guilty by association bastards also there was uh, a, there was a slight spin off where i tried to argue no, i say i tried to argue i successfully confused everyone and thus will claim victory that the orcs are actually a democracy yeah, my brain kind of started melting. Yeah, there. not even I was <laughs> gonna. I don't know if I even was on that boat with you. Oh yeah, okay. My my theory was um, orcs choose to follow strong leaders, and if they do not want to follow the leader because they do not believe them to be strong, they challenge them to uh, that ritualistic fight that I still can't remember. We are gonna continue that trend of you not knowing the name. Of the Magora. That's my next tattoo on my forearm. Is it, no, I, so write <laughs> it on your hand so you never forget. No, I'm going to a tattoo into my forearm. And uh, just like the live version, we also never understood why, because the orcs still didn't vote Thrall in. They just started following him. So. Yeah, because I think I missed the, the part about the voting poll then. 
He was the strongest. I don't they still never voted him in. Down Garrosh's that'd, name that'd, on pieces of paper and then counting them individually to make sure the majority of orcs agreed. Hey man, it's not it's not a perfect system. Plus, a democracy... I also, yeah. I mentioned North Korea because they were also a democracy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, North Korea was involved somehow in Dunn's plan. They were a democracy? Yeah, you know, they were a democracy. And my argument was just because you claim you are doesn't mean you are... Are also, that more. doesn't signify the Horde is a democracy, which was... I, the, I right. never made the claim that the Horde was a democracy. Just well, the, that was the problem. That's what... Just the orcs. <laughs> you rebuttal orcs aren't the either. of the Horde being a dictatorship with, yeah, but the uh, orcs are a democracy. That doesn't counter <laughs> his point. That just puts in another one. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> doesn't counter oh. the point. I don't even care. I'm just recapping. I, do, I don't want to... Our producer, who I'm not sure if you can even hear now, or if he's still like all quiet, or like we've got to do the start of the show again, and I didn't want to. I just wanted to say the producer fucked up, but uh, <laughs> actually, the, initially I said that we had technical. Uh, uh, there was a mistake. Hey, the, the mistake was we put Rioris in charge of producing the show again. <laughs> uh, none of this actually happened the first time, so we're just all just going off the rails. Right, a lot of YouTube exclusive. It's crazy. The people want exclusives. YouTube, you're <laughs> welcome. The people. We do. People. Um, so basically, yeah. The, the temptations thing. to bring out the bank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm not doing it. I'm resisting. I'm looking at it, though. We, we did. T- I, I think I think we made Batman references. I made oh, we Batman did. references. I, I made the uh, Garrosh being the, the leader that we did need I could, and I just like now. Step in. Wait, just once like I again I forget <laughs> right, which way around the quote is that that happened live so that's a oh. thing I also did the uh, you die the hero or live longer enough to see yourself become the villain and that's that's what once happened again, with Garrosh the quote is, <laughs> he's the hero that we deserve but not the one we need right not the one we need right now also I think this might have been during the break and not actually during the, the live show this was during the yeah, we saw the no, we saw like a uh, similarity between Goel and <laughs> Hollow and or jo- Jorel, and that was also that was a thing. But I think that was during the break. That was definitely was. during the break. <laughs> oh well, it's it's a thing now on YouTube. Oh shit! He's like so Superman's it... distant cousin, right? So as you could tell, people on YouTube, this was really this went really well my first time. We definitely weren't flying off the rails in, in outer space. Not a crazy train. <laughs> Trains don't go to outer space, stupid. Space train. That's true. Dude. But, yuck, 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 we're going to discuss it next time after the break. Yeah. Not on a break, like, being flung like, back in. I like how we'll be flung back in and like even in our recap, there will be bits that we missed. So it'll go from <laughs> like... What we're having right now, a logical conversation that won't have anything to do with the conversation that we will go, we're going to be flung back into, which may start mid-conversation. But I don't know if it was logical anyway, though. I don't think you're... Oh, Just okay. be prepared. You start mid-conversation. So what you're going to hear as soon as you come back in is something like, like Howie will say something like, and then Sylvanas hit him with the plague. And you were expecting... <laughs> Sylvanas would hit him with the plague. You're expected to know. I don't think that actually happened, but something like that. That's what I, you've been into. This is. A I'm sure mess. my Sylvanas love is somewhere in that recording. Can I just say, this is my first time hosting, but none of this is my fault. Don't All blame of it, it on me. No, no, don't blame it on me. YouTube comments. Don't blame it on me. Why not? It was done. Yeah, because fault. you yep. played smite at the beginning. <laughs> you should, everyone should know the first couple minutes. Dunn was persistent, even though I'd already conceded that he won the match, although I was just trying to be a gentleman, and What uh, you about the live list will verify show. that you were going, Dunn's going down any minute, I was pushing <laughs> your mind at all? Nope. Uh. I can, as you know, I surrendered because we had to focus on the show, and I care about the show. You surrendered because you didn't have a sewing kit handy? Because I'm ripped. <laughs> wow, that was a, that was a stretch. But you got it, I think. 
Yeah, what? <laughs> You're like, if you said this, I would rebuttal with this clever comment. <laughs> okay, I think that's it. I think we're ready to yes. interrupt ourselves with conversation. Yep. Here we go. We got to go back to the future. Past. I don't know. Let's do it. Board is a democracy. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. Because orcs will not follow a weak leader. So orcs collect... Oh, okay, for the rest of the horde, it's a dictatorship. But for the orcs... Yeah, I was going to say, what? For the orcs, <laughs> which, which form the majority, uh, they choose to follow a war leader because of that individual strength. It's like North Korea, which is, strictly speaking, the uh, democracy. <laughs> it is what? North Korea. North Korea is a democracy. They might it's, call themselves one, but that doesn't make it true. It's a, it, it's a democracy that have elections and everything. The fact that well, there's I mean, America calls itself democratic, but we're repu- but we're um, a republic. I, I'm I'm so lost. Wait, okay, so the horde is actually a democracy. No, he mm-hmm. said the orcs are a democracy. The orcs. the orcs are a democracy. But they they didn't vote. They just followed the person that they they started following Thrall, and he was the person that who wasn't corrupted or he wasn't lethargic or he wasn't suffering the blood. Did you not read the also, part about he, the voting also, polls. He brought the he brought the shamans back, and that's why the orcs chose to follow him. If they didn't want to follow him, uh, there'd be what's that ritual called? That ritual fight, Mac Mac something or other. Magora. That's the one. Th- they'd do that. They'd throw down because that's how orcs work. But Thrall was their leader, and he was a strong leader, so he exactly. didn't get so voted. The orcs chose to follow him. They... And you've got to keep in mind that orcs loved Garrosh, or they did back in Cataclysm. He was a war hero. He he was the he was the leader that they deserved or wanted. Um, <laughs> I forget the Batman quote, and actually I shouldn't do Batman quotes because we'll trigger how he's bad impression again. No, oh, the God. quote is, uh, he's not the hero they need, but the one... Oh, no. He's like, he's the hero they deserve, but not the one they need right now. And the right. one they needed was Dranosh, but he was dead. Well, they needed Harvey Dent, but... And <laughs> also, also, talking about Batman quotes... I'm so lost. You, uh, you, you die a hero, or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. That's or you become the villain by, by nuking a city, and then killing people who disagree with you. That also... Garrosh didn't. Garrosh hasn't killed anyone that's disagreed with him. No, his his Gestapo did. They blew up a whole inn and killed a bunch of commanders because they disagreed with his his tactical decisions in Tides of War. You can, you can't prove that Garrosh was aware that that happened. The, the Corcoran protect the war chief. That's their whole thing. And that, the leader yep, of the Corcoran does... killed them. So. <laughs> That's like you. That's so, like so you, if, it's, if, if the president of the United States bodyguard shot someone, then it's the president's fault. You need to assign the blame where uh, where the blame is. Yeah. The Corcoran. Who? Okay. Okay. Fine. Well, I'll totally do that. It's it's the fault of the Corcoran, but because of how the war, the horde works and how the war chief works, it ultimately is his fault. The horde's war a dictatorship. Chief of it's the not war it's chief. All fault because it's democracy. But it's not, it's not a democracy. It's a democracy. My head, I have a little brain matter leaking out of my ear right now because I, I don't know what's actually happening. I don't know somehow, what's happening yet. I don't understand Dunn's argument. <laughs> somehow I've become the leader of the show and Dunn's confusing me and I don't know what's going on. Welcome to my world. <laughs> Welcome to my world the, the past couple of weeks. Oh, crap. Well, okay, I have to say, okay. real, let hold me, on real quick before I leave. Real quick okay, before I say, ahead. if you had questions, please resend them to me because my chat just totally crashed and I had to reset the whole thing. So, okay, go ahead, Dunn. Okay, allow me to take you back to the beginning. Uh, orcs follow strong leaders. They don't respect people. They don't respect weak leaders. If an orc doesn't respect uh, another orc's leadership, they will challenge them to that thing that I forget the word again. The Mac Gora. That's the one. As was seen evident when Garrosh wanted to go to Northrend to stop Arthas, and Thor was like, no, nah, let's not do that yet. And Garrosh threw down. He's like, fuck you. And then they fought, and then the Scourge came, and then Gar- uh, Thor changed his mind. But the point I'm getting at is, because no one has challenged Garrosh, that is indicative of the Orcs showing support for him. So it's a, like a vote. But 
he did have a challenge. He was challenged by Karen, and he got killed because Magatha uh, poisoned his ass. Oh, oh, so, so that's Garrosh's fault as well, is it? No, it's not. I don't think is it is it? at all. But Garrosh but you just said that there was Garrosh no Garrosh example from... of people challenging his opinion, and, and Karen obviously was like, "This guy's a douche." Yeah, and he didn't and, stop him. And, and under under rules of combat, he he challenged, and the match was resolved. Garrosh won, and and through subterfuge. I I am of the school that Garrosh could have won that anyway. I'm actually no. the school that he would have lost. Yeah, because wasn't it evident that Karen was like kind of playing with him for a little while? Yeah, but and Karen obviously end, uh, had like, the upper hand. Karen got one scratch on him with had the poison, and yeah, then that one because scratch, of that, he started that becoming sluggish. With... When he hit him with the poison, that one scratch also cut the rune spear in half. No, it didn't. Wasn't that the, the killing you... blow? No, the killing blow. He took his head off. Because he sort of sank to his knees and Garrosh was like, fuck you! That's how it I'm went. sure that that blow, I don't really think that, I don't think that's how it went. I'm well, pretty sure that broken rune spear happened after. No, I'm convinced it happened before because I remember all the th- forums, I were like, but he was disarmed, Garrosh would win anyway. But he still and, had two pieces of a spear though, wouldn't he? Yeah, but I mean, what, it, didn't get, it didn't get completely shattered into little splinters all over the place. Uh, it, it, Half of it would be a stick, let's be honest. With the spike on the end of it. Yeah, was it speared on both ends? I don't know, but at one end would have had a spear. One end, yes, yeah, okay, so he'd have a shorter stick. With a but the whole the whole point is he started losing once the poison scratched him through his yeah, sword or blade we, or whatever. We, we would axe. never know, like, if if it was a poison that Garrosh wouldn't win. I thought the whole scene that the context of it was that Karen was easily capable of winning. But he was basically trying to spank Garrosh in front of all the the other orcs. And then Magatha used that to kill Karen because she hates him. Well, that that was foolish of him because he knew it was a fight to the death. Well, that, I mean, that's true, but I I don't, I mean, I don't think that Karen went into it thinking he he wouldn't have killed uh, Garrosh. I mean, he has, I guess he would have the prerogative if he won. To Necro's defense, that wouldn't have been an issue if Thrall hadn't appointed him. Yeah, exactly. Thrall's fault. <laughs> no, why? Why can? When has Thrall ever led the Horde wrong? Why couldn't people just respect his decisions? Uh, when he promoted Garage to War Chief, that's when he did that. That has he been proven wrong. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Looking at the Horde, we're doing much better with Garage's War Chief. Your faction is like in half, and it's going through a civil war. Yeah, but during Cataclysm was like a golden age for the Horde. Resources for like, what, wise. a year and a half while the horde was still splintering it was just starting to but it yeah, still but keep was. in mind like before that it was nothing but like misery and living in the desert with no wood the, which hey, is the, why i blame the night elves no 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 the night elves were trading with the horde but twilight's hammer is the one that screwed that all up not enough because thrall and varian came to a uh, an agreement for how how they trade and then twilight's hammer ruined it and that was one of the impetuses why the uh, the whole war reignited? May, wow. may, may I add? Why is Varian giving thr- like the orcs night elf wood? Well, he he was, he was acting bit... representative of the whore, of the alliance. I oh, know. I think it's a bit presumptuous of him. He was not high king at this point. No, but I'm I'm pretty sure he went into it with the assumption that like the alliance leaders met beforehand and they said, "Oh, Varian, go for it. Go to this meeting." And act and act in our stead. I mean, because it's not like Varian was just well. The night elves are going to concede their land, and then oh, we'll just the gnomes. We'll just give you Nomergon. Who cares? We don't want it anyway. We I mean, don't want was... Nomergon. I'm sure we we covered this last week. No one wants <laughs> Nomergon. I don't even know how we got to this point in the topic, of the conversation. Weren't we trying? You trying to convince me that the horde, the orcs are a democracy? The the, the orcs are a democracy. But they they followed somebody, but they didn't promote. They didn't like all vote for Thrall. They just followed him because he took charge and was the leader. That's that's not the same as democracy. It, they followed old. him because he almost reinstated the old ways before the Draenei ruined everything. <laughs> oh shit! The Draenei did ruin the old ways. Okay, fine. I give up. I don't even. It's not even Thrall's fault. Thrall has Thrall has no no issues anymore. Thrall's the, well, the, 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 the excuse, me, excuse me, he prefers Goel. 
I don't give a the shit. The only thing you can blame Goel for is for making the bad judgment call of doing what was popular at the time instead of the safe decision. The safe it, decision would have been someone else, but the popular decision was to agree with his people who were crying for Garrosh to for and unless any above anyone else to take his place. But those were the young orcs. It wasn't it wasn't like as widely popular as it was more controversial. I mean he was popular with the young orcs, but the old ones were like I'm pretty sure in it does in the shattering doesn't Somebody say, you know, he can see the same thing in, in Garage as they see in Grom, and it, as in the how the whole the horde used to work. It, that it, that's either a scene in the Shattering or Twilight of the Aspects, where somebody says something like that. Uh, so I, I, I he had the support the of the young orcs, but not the not all of them. He even but says still, at that point, thing. even with the young orcs, you know, it's it was still a fairly. Like I said, it wasn't the safe decision. It was the popular well, that's decision. At that the time, the young orcs had a lot alive. of sway. Young orcs had a lot of sway. They would be the future horde. And so he wanted to give them somebody, someone who they respected, just like the old ones respected him. Right. So that was what his mindset was. Now, if you want to go directly to that time point, then yes, it's his fault for making that decision. He had no way of knowing. He just made that decision. So in that sense, it is his fault. Well, here's here's my whole argument because Dunn keeps trying to bring up the fact that Sarfang the Younger was killed. Um, Sarfang the Younger was killed, and he would have made. And he was, was going to be the. Uh, he would have been. He was Thrall's first choice for replacement or interim oh, war chief, if you will. So it's humans' <laughs> fault. <laughs> well, humans' fault. Are you, are you counting the Lich King as a human? He, well, yeah, he, cause was, cause he was he Crown Prince of Lordaeron. Before he was corrupted and then he killed and tore out his heart and then murdered also, souls for the with record, an orc he, and he he's also responsible uh, for the plague. Also, if humans didn't exist and the orcs came to Azeroth, there wouldn't have been an issue. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> my topic has gone off the rails. It's just hitting me right in the <laughs> I'm face. See if I can bl- if I can find a legitimate reason to blame every single race in the alliance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's my ultimate point I was going to make eventually before we realized it was all the Drenai's fault. Back in, even ignoring Garrosh and the whole issue of promoting Garrosh, there was a big issue in Wrath of the Lich King that I think falls on Thrall's head. And it's what happens at the Wrathgate. Uh, Putris's betrayal is a direct uh, line of showing of incompetence from Sylvanas. Because she obviously... She was developing the plague. We It's confirmed, I believe, in Arthas uh, Rise of the Lich King at some point. Maybe another book. I think it's that one. That she was developing her own strain. Like, like, high, like she was highly trying to do it. Not just testing. And so she apparently was not able to figure out that Varimathris, who was a Dreadlord, and joined her on the flimsy reason of join me or die. She wasn't able to find out that him and Putris were planning this coup and then attack everybody at the Wrathgate and killed everyone. And at that moment, when the Horde and the Alliance uh, joined forces, they were winning. They were winning that battle. Granted, it could have switched the other way when the Lich King came, but we don't know, because right as that happened uh, and Sarfang gets killed, the whole place is plagued. So I ultimately say that 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 event, not the the Lich King's involvement, obviously, but that event of losing Bolvar... And uh, all the forces being wiped out. That's Thrall's responsibility. Thrall, as the leader of the War Chief, took into the Horde this ally in the Forsaken. And Sylvanas was not able to find out or figure out, or she was too incompetent to realize there was a coup brewing. And it caused all the deaths of all the Horde and Alliance at the Wrathgate. A battle which could have turned the tide against the War of the Lich King. So that's, I, I mean, I don't know if, I think my logic is sound in that argument. But now, tell me why it's not, Mister. Uh, how would you? How would you want to type this one, Sylvanas fan? Go ahead. I'm trying to think. I already have. What uh, race haven't I attacked yet? Of the alliance, the, the dwarves. Oh, so, so you're going with the method of attacking, discrediting Necro via attacking the alliance. <laughs> <laughs> well, while Go you ahead. do th- while you do that, I'll think of a legitimate reason why that's not Thrall's fault. Well, it's not Thrall's fault because I mean, you can't. Watch Sylvanas. Garage can't do it. Thrall can't do it. And if then those Thrall two can't do it, then then it's his fault for no. not reigning in his oh, ally. Okay, okay, so Varian knows all about what's going on in uh, Nordsil. Then 
But the alliance Jaina doesn't work the Proud same War. way as the Horde. The alliance doesn't work the same way as the Horde. They're an alliance. They're not one. I mean, right now, Varian's acting as the leader in the, in the in this wartime, but he still can't just say, Night Elves, abandon your homes and just go to Westfall. You're moving there. Like, he doesn't have the authority yeah, well, to do Thrall that. Can't, or Thrall or Garage can't go to Sylvanas and be like, you have to tell us everything. Like, yes, that would, can. they're deep. Do you know how far deep they are into their territory and how easily they would lose if Sylvanas decided, like, you know what, I'm just going to kill you instead. But then it's his fault for taking that ally into the Horde in the first place. If he can't trust her, or if she's refusing, or if he's not even bothering to go look at what trust she's Sylvanas. doing. Then that still is Thrall's fault, ultimately, because he took this faction led by this person that you have admitted you can't trust under the Horde's wing. No, you can't control her. She never intended for the plague to be used on the horde. That wasn't her plan. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. I mean, that's I guess that's more for speculation. You don't know about that. <laughs> she do you, you think Sylvanas would still stay with the horde if she had the forces to be on her own? Uh, and yes. Yes, I do. Why? It's the only reason she joined was so Race she didn't get annihilated in Lord of Rome. only have to fight one foe instead of two. But she would have enough power to stand up against them. So she would just, I think she would just plague everywhere and just kill everyone and try to just destroy the entire world or make them all forsaken. If she could win it and you knew she could win it, then yes. Exactly. <laughs> so she can't be trusted. I mean, I've, I've said it, you've said it. I, that's not Dunn, do, you, do you disagree, Don? Can you trust Sylvanas? Um. Uh. She's never intentionally yeah. harmed the Horde. Maybe not intentionally, but her incompetence in preventing this coup. Okay, let's fine, 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 fine. Let's say it's all. Let's let's here's here's how I'll, I'll go from this argument. Sylvanas, she should have a, a lockdown on what's going on in the Forsaken. Yes, because she kind of yeah. is their 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 ultimate leader with no challenge, and she apparent she knew that she obviously commissioned the. They were making the plague for her. And she took an ally who was a demon that only joined him, her because she needed to or she was going to kill him. So obviously right there, he can't really be trusted. How can you not say she is not incompetent by not seeing what Veramathras and Putris did? She either knowingly knew what was going on and just pretended she didn't, or she knew and she was incompetent. Either way, it's still Thrall's fault. Either well, way, she was... And the thing is, ahead. the thing is about Thrall. As soon as that happened, Thrall mobilized to rectify the problem immediately. And then after that, he installed Corcoran Guard all over Lord Run to make sure that it didn't happen again. But that's kind of too late at that point. It already happened. Well, you, so, the, the, the Alliance have never made a mistake. Jaina I mean, I get what has what has Jaina done besides what can you, she can you ruined the blood of joining Nidal? your Alliance. Because the Blood Elves twice she used the neutrality of Dalaran. In a neutral city. The Blood Elves twice don't say neutral. The Blood Elves twice used the neutrality of Dalaran to attack the Alliance for Garage. Yeah, twice and, and and that and that gives uh, Jaina like, the right to commit mass genocide in a neutral city. She didn't kill them all. A lot of them are pri in prison still. Yeah, apart, like, oh. apart from all the ones that the uh, the Silver Covenant got to. Those are the ones that didn't leave. Who are, who, are, who are known like fanatics. Racists. The Silver Covenant are? Yeah, they, they at any opportunity to kill Blood Elves, the Silver Covenant will take it. Alright, well, I don't think we're going to agree on Thrall. But, well, uh, that's because he's Jesus. Well, <laughs> I agree in this note. You're right in the Thralls. If you look at that exact moment and you do not allow anyone to go any further back... It is that direct, that is one link in the chain. I still think it's pretty ridiculous that we have to say, when, whenever I bring up a point against the Horde, we have to go all the way back millennia to go, oh, well, it's the, it's the Eridar's fault for existing. I mean, that seems pretty silly, in my but, opinion. Yeah, but it's cool, because you, you said the chain is bad, and the chain has been bad forever, so I want to cut it off at where the chain bad chain starts. But isn't there a point where stuff has happened and stuff is beginning to heal and then somebody ruins it all over again that person that ruins it's not not, not at fault at all it's all ultimately just the first because that chain fault. would still be bad even if you remove them bad things would continue on this chain but you have to remove that. it that way bad thing well yeah because what is it if Thrall didn't appoint Garage he just appointed someone else 
We'd still have the Burning Legion to deal with. There would still be racism between the Alliance and the Horde. There would still be problems. Eventually, we'd run out of resources and have to do this war anyway. Because mm -hmm. we live in a barren area. No matter what you look at it, if you take it right at Thrall po Pointing Garage, bad things still have the potential of happening. Right, the potential. But it's not confirmed that it would. I will, I'll, fine, you know what? But I it will, will be confirmed give you the Drenai's fault. I'll even give that to you. But stuff started healing, and then it got worse. Because of Thrall Pointing Garage. How can, how can that he not get any blame for that? Well, like I said, he's a link in the chain of things that have led to it, but I don't think that... He, 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 he reignited do. the fourth. He started the fourth war. It's not like he just what? killed one human. He used the, the cataclysm to no matter what. Under thrall, or if he would appoint Sarfang, someone who even under anyone, because the fact was it started. Be it really ticked off when we decided as a horde to go get the night elf wood by force because it was no longer being supplied to us. But the, we, but they were trading, and if Garrosh wasn't leader okay, wasn't after the cataclysm happened. Then there's nothing to say that that whoever the the, the war chief was would have just started invading everywhere. There's no uh, way saying that that would happen. Garrosh did that because he was bloodthirsty and he wanted to to recapture that idea of the old oh, no, war. No, 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 no. Garrosh, Garrosh isn't bloodthirsty. Garrosh is just wants to return orcs back to a time of honor. And personal. Oh, then you're not helping. He did. He did it because they're running out of resources, and he did yeah, exactly. Speak. And that and that is that is not honorable for an orc to exist, like scrounging. Okay, 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 fine, fine. Thrall is completely innocent. Uh, we're gonna. Yes. I don't know, fine, whatever. Uh, two. We're, we're gonna head to break, and then we're gonna do some Q and A afterwards. I'll see you guys then. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Bo Aether's Lore uh, here on NordrisLoreRadio.com. I am always, as always, is Necroxus. I am Necrox. I can't speak, but Dunn and Howie are both here. Maybe I'm they can speak better I'm than I can. I'm sometimes done. He's sometimes done. I, I have many aliases, each one more. So you're done, and, and then this. Howie's not so done? And we're Bo Aether's Lore? <laughs> I'm a little bit more rare. <laughs> 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 Okay, so we are going to move on to um, Q&A, and I'm going to start with the IRC questions. Um, if you're listening live and you're not in the chat for some reason, just go to uh, nordrisloradio.com, hit the chat at the top, and join us. Uh, if anyone has any questions, they can send them to me, Necroxus, in the chat, and we will get to them. Okay, first question is from Tyranor. Um, my question for the show, what race do you enjoy reading about in the novels? Not your favorite race, mind you. For example, my favorite race is the Orcs, but I enjoy reading about the dwarves since I find them fun. And I also enjoy the Pandarans since they talk about a lot of closer to home issues like family and not war. Okay, okay, one second. Every time Tyranor sends me a question, it's like, here, read this giant forum thread that I wrote and That's talk about that. Oh, okay then. <laughs> I was about to say, you, you get nothing easy. All right, I'll go, I, I'll go last. You guys go ahead. Uh, favorite race to read about? Um, uh. Hmm. Uh, that's really no. That's really hard because like I read a lot and I read about like not just like Warcraft related. I read a lot of things and I don't pick favorites because I like books. Yeah, you know, I really don't either in the lore. But you know, I I've really enjoyed um, reading about, but also playing. He didn't ask that, but. Like in the PTR and three uh, five point three and also in five point two, I really like how the Blood Elves are lately. Even though I'm not a I'm not a Horde player, I like the screen time that they're giving to the Blood Elves and Lorthamar and and Ramath and Athos. So uh, Lorthamar Kenobi. <laughs> exactly the trolls too. Even though I hate I mostly hate troll patches, I like reading about the Dark Spirit trolls at least. You know, be liking the trolls, man. What? I do. <laughs> Once you go troll, you never re-roll. <laughs> that's, I guess that's true. <laughs> okay. I'm sure it already is a t-shirt. I'll give you one, I'll give you guys one guess to what I love reading about. Oh, I already figured it out. But go ahead. Oh, uh, I want to hear what you think. I just Batman. assume it's the Forsaken, because you have, like, a like a lore nerdy hard-on for Sylvanas. A flash of green, lantern. 
Metropolis. Green Lanterns. <laughs> Green Lanterns. <laughs> the Walking Dead. <laughs> Yes, the Walking Dead. I actually have a legitimate reason, though. I have a legitimate reason why it's the undead, and that's because they don't get screen time, and you rarely get an instance to look inside their working inner workings. Wait, they, the undead don't get screen time? Are no. you talking about the Forsaken or the undead in general? Forsaken. You never they, get to see like it's a rare occasion where you get to see actually what their inner thinkings are. But you had a whole bunch of that in Cataclysm, like the entire Lordaeron storyline of all the zones up there. Are all forsaken. Yeah, but you, you said see, how he was already level. Oh, that's uh, true. That he books. Was already level captain. He uh, didn't go back. I mean, how often I'm... do you see undead in books? Or I guess oh. um... Arthas. She's in that book a lot. Sylvanas, and it's all about undead. Okay, yeah, fine. That's that cool. Book was awesome. I had no problem with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was. It's my favorite book actually, out of the all the ones that it, that we have so far. And especially, I, I would like to see like her thoughts. inner workings now. Like, if they just wrote a book of, like, her personally and, like, her thoughts and what's been happening from, let's say, the beginning of Cataclysm to now, I would love to read that. In diary format. In di- Dear Diary, Today I Die <laughs> by the... <laughs> Dear Diary, Today Valkyr I Was Enslaved me. by the Valkyr. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was saying, I would like... That's actually why I would love to read that, and I feel like it would be nice to get a view into those inner workings that have been I, I would like a diary I know this isn't the question but it's the question now. I would like to read the diary from Cataclysm to now of Goel. Oh god. No, I think it'd be really interesting. Especially the part when he gets like torn into the four. Uh huh. That when was he bad. undergoes his useless character development that nothing ultimately happens for. Hey man, I got an epic quality blow cacao. <laughs> We need more thrall because if the one thing World of Warcraft lore is missing, it's it's thrall. There's not enough of it. So I have blood elves and, to- and trolls. Howie has undead. What about you, Dunn? I, I don't know. I, I, I'm really hard pressed to 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 pick a single race. Really. Uh, okay, that's fine. Really different. I understand. I, I agree with your reason. Um, let's go to another IRC question. This is from Dolk. Um, Okay, so this question is a bit of theory crafting for you guys. Do you think that it would have been possible that the Kingdom of Lordaeron could have been a reigning superpower if Arthas had been a competent king and all the treachery in the Old Alliance would have been wiped out before it could cause harm? Yes. What, what was yeah. the question? I just heard incompetent, so I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Basically, Basically, if Arthas wouldn't have been, like, an idiot and didn't become the Lich King and didn't become follow Malganus would Lord Oron be a superpower today? Uh, yes, because they were a yeah. superpower before they fell, so why would they... If he just kept it going, they would have been... I mean, all you had to do is push him back to Northrend and then leave it. Right. But Arthas was a be. hot-headed idiot, and he ruined the humans for everybody. <laughs> Jerk. Now, the reason okay. why the humans didn't exist, we'd all be <sighs> fine. It's the humans' fault now, folks. Now it's going to be the dwarves in about ten minutes. Just... Just hang on. We figured it out. We'll let you know in a second. Okay, another uh, another IRC question um, from AW11. I don't know if that's supposed to be like owl, whatever. Uh, does Garrosh know about Lorthamar's campaign on Thunder Isle? If so, will he try to kill him for it? And how many other Horde leaders does he plan to kill before he feels, quote, safe? Have, Garrosh hasn't killed anyone? Uh, he tried to kill Vol'jin. Not even, and yeah, but he hasn't killed anyone. Killed Karen. Yeah, he killed Karen. <laughs> so, so he won then. No, you said you said he hasn't killed a faction leader. Karen was the faction leader. Nah. You know something that's funny in five point three, when you're doing the quest chain, uh, as the alliance, you meet up with this one troll named Zentabra. She's like the uh, druid uh, from the oh, retaking the, of Echo the, Isles. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, like she's explaining stuff to you, and she basically says, for some reason, Garrosh thought that Vol'jin was dead when his assassins uh, attacked him. And when I first read that, I thought, why would Garrosh think that? Because his assassins didn't return. Like yeah, he was the we player who killed them all. And then we're like, yeah, yeah, he's dead. Yeah, are we, is that the assumption that the, the Horde players did that? Must be. So you did do that? Well, yeah, well, I, I'm not. Yeah, we do. 
You actually go back to garage and say he's dead? No, you don't go back to garage, but they like tell you like I forget like in a letter Bulgin oh. tells you like, Hey, I need you to tell him that I'm dead. Oh, okay. Well that makes sense then. It was just something I didn't I'm I You don't missed. actually do it, but it's implied that you do because Well I, I think the implication right. is you report it to Nazgrim. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well that makes sense then. Alright. Even though you're receiving letters all the fucking time from <laughs> And Tak Tak knows that he's okay, so I was just going to bring that up. Yeah, Tak Tak seems to know everything is going on about the rebellion and Vol'jin being alive, and he's a sleeper I mean, he's, alliance agent. Yeah, he's the one you got to watch out for, Garage. <laughs> um, oh god, oh, don't I got, worry, I got my eye on him. <laughs> I got a question from Goel, and it's literally like ten ten lines, but I'll try to condense it. I got a question for you guys, done in the cast. Yes. Um, I noticed that Manoroth's remains are used in Hellscream the Younger's armor. Um, Hellscream the Younger. I don't know. Yeah, Hellstream. Garrosh's armor. Yeah. As did he say Hellstream the Younger? Because yes, though, it did. though technically correct, that is a very odd way to... It's true. But I mean, it, it, he is the Younger. But uh, okay. I noticed that Manor Ultimate names, blah, 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 blah. As said in Tides of War, how how did they use the skull to hit the little sh- the shoulder? I always thought that Manor Ultimate was massive. Did they have... <laughs> Did they have Voldrin do voodoo head shrinking? Oh, I think the question is, how did how they, they make Manoroth's head? head as armor? Right. On tiny shoulder, you... not tiny shoulders, but big right. shoulders. Well, one th- <laughs> first, of, first of all, I need to pull up a picture of Garrosh because I don't think Manoroth's head is shoulder armor. I think not, the tusks are. I think tusks. tusks. Right. I'm, I, I might have misunderstood that, but it was hard to read, so I'm sorry, Goel. But I think your question was how can how are his massive tusks on Garash's armor? Uh, because I, they're on his shoulder. Yeah. Was that, no. I mean not only are you not using all of the tusk most likely. I mean, most likely that wasn't like the part that's cut off was not the end of the tusk. I'm sure they used a little oh, bit oh, of it. Oh, and oh, even no, then, okay. He's his skull is sat on Garash's shoulder. On the whole his, skull. Uh, on his well, like the front half of his skull, he's sat on his left shoulder by the looks of it. I don't remember that. I, 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 mean, I don't look at Garage that uh, much. I'll give you a link to a picture of his model. Oh, I see it now. Yeah, yeah. it is. That, but that huh. being said, that wow. looks, that looks the right size for Manoroth's head. I mean, he was he was huge, but his head wasn't that big. So I guess that's the answer. Sorry. Uh, it, his head was small enough so that it's realistic. I guess that's it. Okay. And let's uh, not forget, Garrosh has kind of beefy shoulders. Yeah, he's, Garrosh is not small by any means. Uh, as an order. I don't know. I mean, Manoroth was supposed to be huge. Yeah, but like, Pit Lord's heads aren't the big bit of it. Their heads aren't like proportionately big to their body size. Well, that's true. Yeah. Plus, isn't in that cinematic in Warcraft 3, doesn't he have like, like six double chins? So I think he, I think his head looks bigger than it actually is. I think he's also fat, sense. right? He is kind of obese. <laughs> okay, next question from the IRC from Kenny Powers. Uh, hey, Nick, good job so far with the show today. Thank you. Uh, I got a question for you. Since you said you did the PTR, do you know the status of Warlord Zayla? From the little I saw, it seemed like she's a Garage loyalist. Personally, I think it's a shame because at least in Kata, it seemed like she had a decent head on her shoulder. Is Zyla the dragon thing? Yes, she's, she's a dragon uh, leader now. Well, she she ob- she obviously wants the dick. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. I mean, haven't we spoke about this like a couple weeks we ago? We did. We actually did last week, too. Did we? Yeah, the short answer is she is in 5.3. She is outside of Orgrimmar. She's using the demon chain for people who know don't know what that is. It's basically an artifact. I, I think it's demonic in nature, just by its name. It allows you to easily enslave most dragons. Um, so she's using that to enslave a proto Drake outside of Orgrimmar. And as the that Alliance the player, proto Drake doing in, in Orgrimmar. I don't know. I think that we just not, assume that Garage that can is, do whatever he wants. That is not where that. Well, he did import like Magnetar just to fight in. That's like, true. Night elves. So to answer your question, yes, she's in five point three. She's enslaving a proto Drake. It looks like she's with Garage, but that's honestly not that surprising because she's had a very old school, old old school horde mentality. Even though she is not crazy, she seems like someone who would support the idea of orcish supremacy. 
I mean, do you guys think so or no? I think uh, so. That sounds about right. Yeah. Well, uh, th- this is going back to my uh, orcs are a democracy theory. <laughs> she, she, in choosing, she respects Garrosh as a strong leader. So, in she has cast her vote and her allegiance with Garrosh. Right. And that's just the way it is. Like, because, uh, like, orcs, particularly of that mentality, would never follow a troll, which is why Vol'jin wasn't war chief in the first place. Yeah, we'll see the we'll see what it is at the end of the map when he obviously is going to be the war chief. You, you mean like when all the young orcs who are following Garrosh are dead? Are dead? Yes. <laughs> You're right. So it won't be a problem. Oh, just some clarification from Tyranor. The demon chain used to um, hold the demon soul when uh, someone else had it previously. So. It, it does oh, still allow you to... When, uh, uh, what's his name, had it? Necrock, or, uh, Necrosh is his name, according to Tyranor. I think that's true, that's right. Sounds about right. Actually, you will soon learn if Tyranor says something, it's probably right. Yeah, I'm just assuming now. Th- this so. man. <laughs> okay, let's go on to the next. I have a lot of IRC questions now, so that's good. Um, Lordemir, I guess this is the same as one of the emails that we were talking about in, during the break. Can you guys discuss the current strategy that the Alliance and the Horde performs and what you would have changed if you were the leaders of each faction? That's a big question. Here's a big Uh, answer. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I would do what Garrosh is currently doing, but turn it up to 11. (laughs) But, I mean, that works for for a a little bit, but then it all just falls apart. Yeah, but, like, I, I strike... You know how when Garrosh, like, waited for, like, seven days for, like, all the Seventh Legion to show up at Theramore? Yep. I wouldn't do that again because we've already dealt with the Seventh Legion. I would, like, attack every city at the same time with, like, lava elementals and fucking... Well, with how he is in 5.3, I mean, that seems like a possibility. He he, He does have lava elementals and stuff. And then water, I think, Krakens or Leviathans or whatever they're called. Right. I'd use them. I mean, and, to Garash's credit, he he has a good he's a good strategist. I mean, I admit so in, in my five point three videos. He um after the goblins leave the Bilgewater ones, leave the horde. Uh, what he basically well it's it, it's not like official it happens, but the implication at the end of the uh, the, the what's it called the dark oh, heart of Pandaria. There we because uh, they some goblins died, so they were like, well, we're gonna pay you less because less people need to be paid. Right. Right. So with that, plus the goblin also says something to the effect of, "We'll see where the Bilgewater are when Garrosh needs us, or something like that." So I mean, I think it's safe to assume if they're not gone, they're they're, they're they don't really care. But Garrosh ends up um, using uh, Steam Weedle Cartel goblins. So I mean, as much as he's a big hot-headed idiot, he he is a good strategist. I don't know if we actually answered the question. I think Dunn did. Uh, so what, was, what was the question? Oh, yeah, I'd take it. <laughs> I would strategically strike all capitals or major military bases at the same time. But wouldn't that give the Rebellion a good chance to uh, attack Orgrimmar? Or are you assuming the Horde capitals, too? Uh, yeah, fuck it, I'll do that, too. <laughs> I don't know if he has that many forces, but... Yeah, but, like, if if they're not expecting it, then you don't need... You, you need, like, a couple Dark Shaman to slip nearby... And then, bam, all the lava elementals all over the place. Like, that ports just being, like, torn down by whatever... Is it Krakens, the, the big squid things? They are yep. Krakens, aren't they? Like, Krakens just showing up at all Alliance and, like, non garrosh loyalist ports. All, at, like, within minutes. Like, all over the world, just bam. And, like... <laughs> People, first of all, you'd have the element of surprise, and then you have dealt with, well, at least crippled everyone who opposes you, and then you, fo- then after that, like first wave of attacks, you focus on whoever is left in the strongest position, and just wipe them out with full forces, while everyone else is hopefully licking their wounds and going, "Oh shit, that Garrosh is a." Uh, pretty good in the war theory kind of nosy stuff maybe i should rethink well here's 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 like a kind of response to that but it's also an issue that i had playing through 5.3 
it, the Alliance as a faction, they're they're not divided. Like the entire point of Missa Pandaria is to bring them more together. So I think I mean I think they could stand up against Garrosh's horde. I mean they might not like overwhelmingly just destroy him, but it's something that really really piss it's something that pissed me off the most about five point three. We're just told over and over and over that the Alliance needs the rebellion for some reason. It's just keep repeating it to the point that Vol'jin basically threatens us by saying, if we attack without them, we're going to lose, and then he'll give our corpses to Sylvanas. And as oh, a Alliance Howie, player... did you know about that? Because that was badass when I read that. Know about what? Um, there's a... There's a, I think if you're an Alliance person and you talk to Vol'jin, like, oh, why should we help you? He's like, well, if you don't help us uh, go in, we'll let you go in alone. And then when you're weak, I'll send in my trolls to wipe up the survivors on both sides. Then I'll give your bodies to Sylvanas. No, I did remember. I remember hearing that. And then Vol'jin's like, actually, this is a good plan. Saves me some trolls. Well, Dave Cossack actually said on Twitter that it was just like a like a blustery threat and that they're thinking about um, putting in something for Alliance players to call his bluff, but that's not in the game yet. But it's it's just... It's something that I, I 5.3 doesn't feel like the Alliance has any place in it. I'm like I'm taking this question and kind of using it for a soap a mini soapbox because if um, if anyone has seen the 5.3 stuff, the Alliance's part is not it doesn't make sense. Like we just spy on Garage and then we're just like, oh sure, let's go and join the rebellion. And it's like under the assumption that we need them for uh, for whatever reason. It just it just pisses me off as an Alliance player. I feel like we're just going along with the Horde storyline. Because the Horde side is awesome. I mean, you retake Senjin Village, you attack Razor Hill. Um, even me as an Alliance player, when when there's a part where I'm like, yeah, this is what the Horde's like, yeah, this is awesome. But the Alliance just doesn't have something like that. Well, I mean, if you uh, want, you can take the splitting Silver, Civil War faction. At least we'd have some conflict in our freaking faction then if we did that. Because we have nothing right now. I'm fine. I would totally take that to get some story there development. <laughs> All right, we need to take a break, but then we will continue with the Q and A afterwards. Um, keep sending your questions to me and Acroxis in the IRC chat. I'll see you then. Now I'm Terran. Hey guys, welcome back. Care. <laughs> to I'm Terran now. Here on Norgesla Radio, uh, Don was singing the Void Ray song. Pretty. No, uh, wasn't I was singing the Pine Link the song? The Bane Link song. The Bane Link song. My brain dirt. They're they two very this different is a, things. This is a great, uh, great transition, aren't we doing? Uh, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, anyway, we're still doing Q and A, so keep sending your questions to Necroxis and the IRC. Um, I'm gonna you pick watch one on that's YouTube. They'll be like, "Why are you talking about Starcraft, Don? This isn't <laughs> law." <laughs> Now we're going to do five questions about StarCraft. Just That's the kind of show leader I am. That's I am how totally do. a dick. <laughs> and by which you mean you ask us five questions about StarCraft. Like, can oh, we exactly. mind hit air? <laughs> hey, I yes. figured that out in our in our yes. game when I played yes. against yes. Howie. Damn it. <laughs> oh, that's when I figured game against, out. against Howie. Uh, guys, you're going to enjoy that. Yeah, um, <laughs> Howie and I did uh, three games. The best was, of three series. Uh, the, it was um, surprising. It was interesting, to say the least, because I don't play StarCraft, like, at all. So, anyway, let's get back to the questions. Um, one is from, let's see, Blue Star. Hi, Necro and the guys. I have not played in 5.2 and onward, but how do you feel about King Varian Rin's position, and what do you think will happen with him in the future? Hmm. Okay, heard you here first. Like, no, no, I've got a theory. The Horde have yeah. to go first, so go ahead. The Horde always go first. That's for- true. Like, at the Wrathgate, we went first. <laughs> yeah, and you screwed everything up. We didn't show up first, but we went first. Yeah, and you died. So, good job. Your leader died stupidly and became a Scourge agent. Yeah, but if he'd have won, how badass would that have been? It would have been awesome. It would have been the end of the Lich King, but then Puch just ruined it, so it's Thrall's fault. Anyway, continue. Uh, um, no, it's the Denai's <laughs> fault. That's true. We went over, and for the last time, he prefers Goel. <laughs> right. Every time I say that, like Goel here in the IRC sends me a message saying thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel good. Uh, what was I saying? What, what was it? Okay, so Varian, uh, 
current in this time of war is the high king but i don't think he'll relinquish that power and then Why? next exp- because no one does oh okay and then next expansion your faction will be crumbling and then pride and then we'll be all like look at all the problems and then prize all like but we're gonna fix the problems and we're like no that shit didn't fly in season five when it was the horde <laughs> having the problems and then pride will kick me from the call again well in fairness we do fix our problems pretty easily so we I fix mean, that problems you know you destroy almost destroyed all of azeroth with your problem before it gets fixed you nuke, so you we have nuke bigger problems. I mean, we have more serious problems. <laughs> These aren't baby problems. Have you I would love if we had a conflict, because then we'd actually have some story development, but... I the Draenei wouldn't. The Draenei would never... They, they're just forgotten. No one even cares about them anymore. It's their fault for everything, but they get no development. Well, they've had all the development they need. They right. can't sleep through everyone else. <laughs> I'm causing problems. <laughs> exactly. Uh, what was that saying? Varian uh, and how he sucks. He's not going to relinquish yeah. his power. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah. Yeah, he won't. And then, I don't know, um, Moira will be like... Moira will lead the uh, the rebellion. And then SI7 will try to assassinate her again. <laughs> and then the Horde will be like, yo, you want us to help? Kind of owe you one. And then so Moira just... will be like, okay. And then we'll so break we're... Stormwind. Just, just gotta but, but, then the st- but then the story somehow becomes about us. So eventually, essentially, you you want to do the shattering the book backwards and then Miss Pandaria backwards from yes. the Horde's perspective. That's what's gonna happen. That's next, and then Burning Legion expansion. And you know what? Even then, even then, when it would be the Alliance is falling apart, the story will still focus It'll around still the Horde. Be about the Horde. <laughs> <laughs> and how how like, awesome it is that they're helping. For, for some reason, like Garrosh, who is still he- war war chief. Because we're going to purify him in Siege of Ogr- Ogrimmar, not kill him. He's going to see the area of his ways. He's like, now is the time to strike. And Baldrin is like, yeah, actually, now is the time to strike. Okay, what would happen? Okay, what would happen if the story of Warcraft started from this moment and actually what happened at the beginning is the future? We'll figure it out, folks. This episode, whatever episode this is, season five, we got it. I think this is the penultimate episode of season five. Is it really? I think so. Oh. Is it? Is it it's not? not. No. <laughs> oh, okay, it's not. Are you sure? Oh. There's two more episodes, according to our producer. Yeah, but he's renowned for not knowing anything, so... <laughs> I didn't say anything. It wasn't me who said it. <laughs> Can I hear you shout at me? Because otherwise, it's just an awkward silence. No, my comment was to the IRC. Rayoros is yelling at us right now, and you can't hear him. I'm just saying to the IRC, okay. I am innocent. <laughs> okay, uh, I kind of call in I, the I, kettle black much. I'm done talking. T- <laughs> <laughs> you are done good. talking. Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think that Varian would do that. I mean, he's much more level-headed since Wolfheart, the the book, and all what happens there. It was a ruse. So I don't... What's that? It was a ruse. <laughs> it was a ruse the whole time. It was a ruse the whole time. He's not actually the champion of Goldrin. He's the champion of... Uh, you know, in Twilight... In, uh, not Twilight. In Hydral, there's, like, evil Goldrin. I can't remember his name. He's dead, though, now, I think. That's what we think. Oh. <laughs> It's just a big mind fuck where he's, he's still alive and he is leading the alliance, exactly. making us evil. <laughs> okay, and interesting. That's an interesting theory. You heard, here, you heard it here first. What was the question? I don't know. What about Varian? What do you think about Varian? I don't think much about Varian. The Horde doesn't care about Varian. They uh, just the think o- he's a dick. Last, last time I cared about Varian was in the Old War trailer when he's like, "Let your death god, let this death god take all of you." I'm that was awesome. With your that was, and after that, it just all went downhill. I'm like, Varian, you're not cool no more. <laughs> okay. Uh, next question. This one's from... I like how no one's going to bother answering the question. <laughs> I just ramble for five minutes. I like Varian. He doesn't. That's pretty much the end. That's the answer to that question. Uh, okay. Another question from Lord Amir. Uh, new question for Necro. Um... 
Do you guys think if Grand Marshal Garethos had not been killed by Sylvanas, what would happen if he had joined the Scarlet Crusade? For a second, hmm. I thought you said Grand Marshal Gyarados. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? It would have been game over for everybody then. Gyarados is a horrible Pokemon. With the prevalence like, like, of, like, he, he has, like, Hyper Beam. <laughs> I can blow up everything. With the pre- Uh, I'm not sure, the, pr- the producer just mentioned that Magikarp is best Pokemon only behind Togepi. While I disagree about Togepi because Riorus is horrible at Pokemon, uh, Magi- yeah, Magikarp really. in the new generation of Pokemon, the current uh, Black and White 2, is actually a very good Pokemon, which is a bit yeah. silly. There but with, it, with, with, the, uh, with the prevalence of uh, like Thunderbolt and Thunder on like all Pokemon, <laughs> Gyarados is terrible because of the four times weakness. However, that is assuming that the Scarlet Crusade would actually take him because they are the utmost of xenophobic and if you are not them, then you are probably a, a dirty sinner and then you go to that room with the guy who was also a uh, Brawler's Guild boss who keeps talking about dirty secrets. Well, I mean, Scarlet Crusade also, they have to have Gyarados' Pokeball to control them, so... I mean... We don't know. Is that the assumption that they have Gyarados's? They also need the right badge. That's true. What level he is? If you don't, <laughs> if you don't have the right badge, uh, he would he, he'd just do his own thing. Like in the episode where uh, James bought the magic harp from the yeah. guy on the SSN. That was a good one. And then he kicked it off the little raft, and then it evolved, and then he was all yeah. like, oh, "I am your master." And then Gyarados used surf, and then they blasted off again. <laughs> alright well that was hope that was a good answer to your question let's move on uh, to the IRC um, I have a quick question from somebody else and it also allows me to plug my YouTube real quick so I'm going to do that uh, I'm on the PTR so if you have any if you want to see anything stuff any uh, storylines about that you can just look up my YouTube which is Necroxis like it's spelled with the Z at the end of it and I have all the 5.3 PTR story. Okay, let's go to... I don't that's have any also questions. Why I did, that's also why I didn't do it. Because I knew yeah. you were doing it. And I Starcraft. Have Warlock stuff on there too, so... Yeah, that's, that's why I didn't finish it either. Because I knew you were doing it. <laughs> Plus, it's really freaking hard. It's frustratingly hard. It anyway, is. Lord of Mirrors mad we didn't answer the question, but I think we did. So, I'm going to move on. Let's see, one from uh, from Kenny Powers again... Um, another question I play Horde as an enhancement shaman but I, pl- I have played the Alliance but could never get into them because they weren't my thing going with what you said about the lack of Alliance story in 5.3 if there was conflict in the Alliance not unlike what's going on in the Horde right now how would you like to see it executed I think Moira and her Dark Irons would have been a good place to start but it seems like they fixed that in 5.3 they kind of did I already answered this just Varian's not going to give up his power, and then Moira's going to lead a, a revolution. Well, so I talked. That's how that's how it's going to go down, and then all the and then like a bunch of dwarf players are going to be like, "Yeah, we're getting good law," and then human <laughs> players will be like, "I don't want to raid Stormwind," and then the horde will be all like, "For the horde," because that's our general stock answer we'll to most. <laughs> yeah. That's our stock answer to most. Questions. Well, here, here is. I actually talked about this with a friend because we were talking about what conflict could happen within the alliance that could give them more story. And here's, I think this is a very reasonable thing that they could do at the end of Missa Pandaria, when we dethrone Garash or help the Horde or whatever happens. Um, the alliance, as unless something really bad happens and all the alliance forces are killed, which knowing Blizzard, that's the possibility with the alliance. But if not, all of their forces are still in Orgrimmar, and. Um, there are going to be some people who don't want to leave. Um, here's one example. Sky Admiral Rogers, she's not... While Varian only wants to dethrone Garage, there are a lot of people in the Alliance who are still pissed and aren't, aren't just going to leave when he's gone. Uh, Sky Admiral Rogers, Jaina, it looks like she's shaping up to be like that. Um, you know, even the Night Elves could say, you know, the, the, the Horde took a lot of our territory, so why should we leave and let another, another dick become the Warchief again? So, I mean, I think that could be a good place to uh, to get some conflict for the Alliance. But that's not going to happen, so. <laughs> okay. 
Let's move on. I am almost out of questions. So if anyone has questions, send them to me in the IRC. My name is Nick Croxus in there. Um, let's see. Here's Oh, God, I got one that's really long. Okay, here's one from Ezico. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, I'm going to skip some of it. Uh, he for just wants, for he the wants record, to... if you're not sure the pronunciations of names, I just tend to make one up like Hank or Tim. <laughs> okay, here's from Hank. Uh, he wants to say that Howie is awesome to start out the question. Howie so, is awesome. Go. Howie's awesome. Sweet. Uh, now he wants to ask if Kael'thas is really dead. Uh, based on info through other quests on other bosses... And considering his magical abilities, it seems more likely he is hiding and gathering power to come back, maybe even as a good guy. I just wanted your opinion. Well, at the end of Magister's Keep, we did take his head. Yeah. Based on the fact that we actually have physical proof that it's his head, I would say no. Yeah, I agree. It's, uh, he's dead. That being said, there is the Headless Horseman, so maybe a head isn't as important as we... Given it <laughs> that's true um, and we did keep taking that uh, who was that troll on uh, Echo Isles he's not there anymore but you know who I'm on about right okay I have another question but from a lot. Uh, or, or not another one but a question from Vandalia uh, question in Mr. Pandaria um, they started the scenario wait in Mr. Pandaria they started the scenario with three and one people I don't understand what this question is asking. Are all, okay, are, all, are, are all the scenarios important to the story, or only some of them? In what order do they happen lore-wise? That's the question. So, um, a lot of them aren't, but let's. I could say that the ones that have been added post, or in 5.1 and, and, and beyond, they are all very story-heavy. Because that's how Blizzard is doing the story now, instead of Five Mans. Well, for the most part. They're doing them through uh, scenarios. Five mans and like quests. Who needs those? <laughs> yeah, well, no longer quests. It's a well, mix of the scenarios and the daily quests that give you story. Yep. Um, as for order, uh, the only order that really has—I mean, it doesn't really matter. But in five point one, it doesn't matter. Um, just the horde dagger in the dark ha- happens like right towards the beginning, where Vol'jin almost gets killed, and that's about it. By the story. way, Dagger in the Dark is way better than a Little Patience. Uh, I agree. It, little Patience sucks. And it also makes Toronto look like an idiot. Um, but in 5.3, the order is you first do the Dwarven one, which is Blood in the Snow, with Moira. And then you do the Horde one next, which is uh, the Dark Heart of Pandaria. And then after that, you do another Horde one, and I can't remember what it's called because it's not, it's not actually unlocked in the, in the PTR yet. Is that it's, the one with the Gob Squad? Yes, it's that they, one. They are the best characters. I don't know if you're just assumed to just do that whenever you want, but I can't actually do it right now in the PTR, so I don't know if it's still locked or not, but I assume that one's afterward, after all of them. So I think that's the only... You were uh, you were talking about in the Skype the other day, uh, but uh, yes, it, it, it astounds me that you don't know about the Gob Squad. I actually forgot about them. I did play. Hey, through, what? Uh, They're the best characters. They're like a uh, happy-go-lucky goblin A team. But don't they only have one question or one quest in uh, uh, Twilight Highlands? No, they they've got like loads in Ashara as well. Oh, I forgot. I I actually didn't do most of Ashara. Yeah, the uh, our producer Rioris he's saying that the gnomes actually have an A team too. They're called the G team. So, I'm not. I'm not sure if that is true or uh, our producers' true. attempt to be funny. It's true. Yeah, they are the also. In, you also see them. You saw them at the beginning of Cataclysm with the retaking of Nomergon. So it is true. You, you didn't retake Nomergon. We retook part of it. And the G team don't parachute in. I think. I think they do. Yeah, they do. They give you parachutes in part of the G team quest. So. We have a cool squad, too. Not as cool as our squad. (laughs) Our squad has mini guns and quotes me all the time. Okay, next question. This one isn't exactly a question, but it's, I guess, more of a statement or like a breaking news for the lore, I think. Uh, It's from Blaze. He says, "Um, there's a lot of important lore from Mickey Nielsen's Twitter. And uh, he just wants to let us know that Apparently, Blizzard's really talking about the Alliance leaders, which I only said that because I like the Alliance, and I think that's good because they don't get enough lore. 
So yay, alliance leaders. It's probably going to be like, Tyrande broke a fingernail. Who will help her? <laughs> <laughs> will it be you, champion? <laughs> <laughs> it's right, pro- probably. It probably is. Um, so that was an awesome question, because it totally was. Let's go to the next one from the IRC, uh, from Desilent. I think it's pronounced. Uh, Jerry. You guys, Jerry, from Jerry in the IRC. Do you think that the Touche and the Hojin Pandaren factions will have some part in the Siege of Orgrimmar? And what do you think will happen when they meet? Yeah, how we pretty much answered that question. There's, no, there's going to be well, an epic. Never gonna mention there's going to be an epic love story between what's the name and Thingamabob. Oh, I already forgot their name. Oh, Asa. Asa is the chick. Asa Cloudrunner, I believe her name is. Yeah, that's the woman. Who's the guy? And then G Firepaw. G Firepaw, right? Well, I mean, all you have to do is look at what happens in like 5.1 and 5.3. You, when the Horde leaders meet. G Firepaw's not there. When the Alliance leaders meet, the Alliance leaders meet. Yeah, they never mention him again. When the Alliance leaders meet, Asa's not there, and she's never mentioned. So, well, that's because Shen Stormstar is a hero of the Horde. So, we we got the iconic okay. Pan, Pandar and like lore character. You did. Yeah, they're gonna go to and never be mentioned again. Right. Why I mean, would he, we got Shen? Yeah, he is in five point three. He's on the Horde side. He participates like, in the Battle of Senjin Village and Razor Hill. He also participated in um, the battle that killed Jan's dad. Yep. No, but to answer the question, I don't think they're going to have any relevance in the Battle of Orgrimmar. They'll have more relevance than the Draenei do. That's probably. Yes. They'll have more of a presence, which is, I believe, maybe they might be there compared to none of the Draenei being there. Right. <laughs> okay, so next question. Most of them are already done, so... We're almost out of time, but guys, keep fin- keep sending your questions in because I am. I think this is the last one I actually have. Another one from Lordemir. Um, is it possible that Kael- that Kael'thas is Aethas Sunreaver since the names are similar? And I'm also going to add in we never see his face. Aethas's. Yeah, this but is they don't actually sound the same. Right. This they don't is actually sound the same, and also the fact that we have Kael'thas's head. Also, right. also Kael'thas is blonde, and Aethas is a redhead. Do you see his hair color? I, I have done. Yeah. I can't remember when. But I know I have. Hmm. Uh, right. Hmm. When that is. I, no, I know. not coming back. I hate to break it to all of you, but he's not coming back. He came back once, people got pissed, he's not coming back again. Yeah, plus they ruined him in the first place in, in BC, so... I mean, yeah, what if are they he comes l- back again, he's going to be the laughing stock of all Blizzard, so I don't think they're going to take that. You know what we should talk about in like the last five minutes if we don't get another question gammon law no because i got another question plus i don't want to talk about that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> another one from uh tyranor he wants to know what's the deal with the corcron they're supposed to be the war chief's elite bodyguards but they're basically everywhere now Bashir, pandaria the barons undercity northrend etc uh the application for corcron got a little bit easier yep. in the sense that it's um they say have you like they basically put a bunny in front of you and say kill it, and if you kill it, you are you're in. <laughs> that's that's kind of true. I mean, they do mention it briefly in five point three. They say that uh, one of the trolls, I don't remember who, says that they Garash has basically just combined the Corcoran with Orgamar's like the city guard, and they're all like the yeah. same thing now. So basically, the city guard have been better armed and offered better training and access to any weapon, any like uh, article of war that the horde needs. Right. Okay, and this is why they'd take Thunder Bluff. Probably, I mean, no. it, it could be possible. No, shut up! They do, man. <laughs> well, they all, don't like, take Thunder Bluff. Well, they do talk about using Thunder Bluff to attack Orgomar, so there might be something yeah, no, about that's that. That's the in, proof in, right there, Dunn, that they can't take it because they don't have it. Yeah, plus, what? Karen, or, uh, Bane is Bane's really going through a, a decision to really ramp up defense. Around yeah. uh, Thunder Bluff. Is it Thunder Bluff is untakeable, Dunn? Thunder Bluff isn't untakeable. Then when, how come they have when, it? when Dark Shaman can collapse mountains and summon lava elementals, nothing is untakeable. <laughs> you can't do that because the Torrens are better shamans. Yeah, but they're Dark Shaman. The Torrent wouldn't deal with lava elemental because apparently it's bad. The Earthen it's, Ring's like, don't do it. There'll be another cataclysm. Don't. 
Also, they'd uh, have the portal from to Undercity working. Right, that's true. So Sylvanas would come help. <laughs> Sylvanas won't come help. Who are you trying to? Yes, fool? she will. She hates Garage. Any chance to take down Garage, she'll be a part of it. She's that's having... basically what Vulgen says in five point three. Um, in- about her. She actually doesn't show up. They just go, oh, the Banshee Queen, she, she'll help us. I mean, she hates him anyway. That's basically it. Yeah, basically they <laughs> just have to rely on her hate is so strong for Garage that she'll bother moving. <laughs> right. Um, I don't know. In the meantime, she'll be taking the plague lands. It's like, what? Probably. <laughs> yeah, sorry, she'll, I was busy She'll push the into time. the Dwarven lands, too. She'll just yeah. conquer Ironforge while we're busy. Basically, they'll be like, oh, I'm so glad we took care of Garage, and then the lands will turn around and be like, where are the Worgen? So <laughs> <laughs> Vanus would be there like, oops. They're gone. <laughs> it's a little busy. Right. Okay, so we're almost out of time, but let's I'll we have we do have a question about Gammon, so Yes. Yes. Yes, Gammon. Gammon. <laughs> let's hear the question first. I'm being yelled at not to do it because we don't have time. The don't listen to yours. The question is just why is Gammon captured? And we kind of answered that already. Like because every because Gammon, Gammon is a hero of the Horde, and he stands up for the little man. <laughs> there we go, we answered it. See, we have him. I'd like to point out, it takes like 12 core cr- 20 million core crud to contain Gammon. <laughs> there you go. That's, uh, that's the Gammon question. Yes. Okay, so I think we are now out of time. Um, if your question didn't get answered and you would you like to send it in, you can send it to lore at omfg.fm. Um, make sure to also go back to nightsalore.com uh, for forum-based discussions. It's always fun on there. Um, finally, merchandise again. You can go to www.printonblack.co.uk for all of our... Scroll down to Smoking Gamer. Click on that. And you can oh, see yeah, on, of, on the uh, note of merchandise. If you're into, uh, if you also, if you're also into Jesse Cox, and why wouldn't you be? And right. you are one of the space butterflies. You can get the space butterfly hoodie. It's badass. It is really cool looking. But I, I wear one. Just saying. <laughs> I believe that's it. Um, make sure to catch us next week at the same time on NordjusRadio.com. I have Necroxis, and this is my first attempt at hosting, so hopefully I did a good job. What do you guys think? Yes, uh, no? I'm sure I'll still get yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> like, either, oh, goddamn done, orcs aren't a democracy, or, goddamn done, why did you leave Necro in charge? Or, it's, it's probably all going to come down to me. And then I'll argue with people in, like, YouTube comments, because that's how I roll. And then I'll get text messages from Riora saying, stop, stop feeding the trolls. And then I will reply, I can't, they're wrong on the internet. And then and then a couple of days, like by Wednesday, maybe, uh, just forget about it. Uh, exactly. So. I, thought, I thought it went well, personally, <laughs> from, from this end. But yes, I think Maybe so people should leave uh, feedback in the comments, because I'm on, I'm actually flying to Florida on, I looked at my wrist as if I had a watch, and that would tell me the answer. <laughs> uh, but I looked at my right wrist and I'd wear a watch on my left. Uh, where was I going? I'm <laughs> I going to know. Florida on Sunday, so I'm I'm having two weeks off from law podcasting because I've paid a lot of money to go to Florida, and I'm not going to spend that time on my shitty laptop in Florida. Nice. I I wouldn't I wouldn't disagree with that. Which is also why we got you to host today because I'm not going to be here, and how he's <laughs> doing finals next week, so it's just going to be you. Maybe Friday. Oh, God, uh, listen, I may or may not. It's uh, next week I'll be here. It's the week after I won't be. Uh, okay. Well, fun. So, all right. Well, it's been fun, guys. Thanks. Uh, once again, we are But Wait, There's Lore. Uh, I'm Necroxis and joined by Dunn and Howitzer. Thanks, guys. Great conversation. I will see you next week. <laughs>